So we're going to be looking at an actual example, and you might recognize this. Um, I wanted to first run through an example that we've seen before, so we're not focused too much on the markup. We're just focused on how the different units affect different things, and then we're going to go through and actually build a full layout in this. This is the original code that we sort of left off with when we did a lot of this in creating our this little card component thing that we made together. Um, so if we take a look at it now, the, one of the reasons I did choose this is because there's button, buttons in there and buttons are a great example for lots of things, including setting up and using M's and REMs and when you might want to use one for one thing and something else for the other. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a extra class that I can put on my buttons. It's going to shrink or grow the font size because it's really going to illustrate everything. So let's call it uh, button big. We're going to give that a font size of let's say 1.5 rem which is going to give us a pretty big font size and then let's come on a button small and let's give that one a font size of 0.75 rem which will be pretty small so now i should be able to put those font sizes on those two buttons so let's come and do that i'm going to give my first one here the class of button big and the second one here the class of button small. So this is sort of my default button class. And then we're modifying it with these two modifiers, like we did with the colors before. So if we come and look at how that's affected things, you can see it has grown and shrunk the font sizes on those. And that's awesome. But the button hasn't really, this button was forced to get bigger because the content inside of it did get bigger. So we do have the padding that's on these. The problem is on this big button, the text is taking up a lot more room than it is on this small one. This button didn't really scale up when I changed that font size. And let's let's bring in like a default button here too, actually. Um, I'll stick that one right in the middle. We'll just put default here. And we won't have any modifier class on that, just so we have a reference point of what the original button looked like. So we see our three button sizes. If you look at this button, the space on this side looks a lot bigger than the space on this side, where it's the exact same size. But the problem is my font size has gotten a lot bigger. My button really should be scaling up with those sizes. So remember, I always said I put font sizes in rem. It stops some weird stuff from happening. But I like putting my margins and my padding using M's. So if we come here where I had my padding of 15 pixels and 30 pixels, I'm actually going to change this. And I'm going to change my padding on this on the top and the bottom to 0.5 M and on the left and the right to 1.25 M. And let's go and take a look at my buttons now. Notice how the shape of them is much more similar one to the next. Learn more about me. I'm gonna change that just because it looks different because it's such a long amount of text inside the button. So we're gonna keep the length of the text more similar in all of my buttons. And you can see it just looks like the button is getting bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller because the padding around it is scaling up and down with the font size of that button. Now, you might be wondering one thing. Why is it scaling with the font size that I'm putting on the button itself? Because this, it's not paying attention to the parent. It's paying attention to the font size of its own element, right? Like this is my padding here is 0.5 and 1.25 on the button. And so if I look at that button, it's paying attention to the padding that or it's paying attention to the font size that I put on this class. So it's looking at this font size. This is where I mentioned that it's a little bit weird when you're using M's because with M's, if you're doing it on the font size property, it's looking at the parent. If you do it on any other property, it's no longer looking at the parent. It's M is relative to the font of this element should put say font size so m becomes relative to the font size of that element of this element here when it's put on your padding or when it's put on your margins or even if you did it on like a width or height or something like that it would be looking at this font size rather than the parent's font size this is where scaling and this compounding factor is good because it won't compound out of control it's going to compound or scale according to what's here Whereas if I used rems for this, it becomes a set value, just like when I use pixels. So if I come back and I set those in rem, this space is exactly the same as this space, which is exactly the same as this space. These two sizes are exactly the same, but because the font size is bigger, this looks a lot smaller visually than it does on this one. Let's switch those back to M just so we can see it again. And now we can see that it's more of this like scaling up that's going on rather than this set size around the text of my button. So that is how I choose between M's and REM's when it comes to setting things and why I'm putting M's 
for margins and paddings and why I'm setting rems for my font sizes. The font sizes, it stops that weird cascading from happening. M's because I can take advantage and make it relative to the font size that's in there. This also makes it really easy when I'm setting margins on paragraphs or on heading. Because if I come and I go, I want to add, I want to change the margin bottom on my H1. I know my font size is 24 pixels. So if I came and I said margin bottom is 1M, I know now that my margin bottom is exactly 24 pixels. So that would literally be 24 pixels for my margin bottom. If I came and I said margin bottom is 2M, well, then my margin bottom would actually be 48 pixels and so on and so forth. So it's relative to the font size of that actual element. Now, obviously, and now I've said I don't like setting pixels here. So you do have to think about it a little bit. But that also means if I come and I set my font size here to 3rem, and you don't know exactly what, you know, we've got a nice big font size on that, but we don't know exactly what 3rem is. Well, it doesn't really matter. I don't have to worry about exactly how big that is. I can come and look at my font size and I go, oh, I want this space underneath to be about half that. I can come and say margin bottom is 0.5m because it's 0.5 of whatever this font size is. So now my space is about half of my font size where I go, I want it to be bigger than my font size. I do 2M. And now my space after is twice whatever my font size was. So it's always relative to that element itself, which makes it really, really easy when you're dealing with your typography. And the big advantage is when I change my font size, this will adapt automatically and I won't have to change both of them because when we start changing font sizes, which we will be doing for different screens, we're gonna have a small screen and a big screen, the font size has to change on it. So if you're changing the font size, it's nice that you don't have to go and change your margins because they've all been set in M. The same way here, when I'm changing my font sizes, I don't have to go and change the padding for those sizes. Then of course there are percentages and in general percentages I will be using for the width. You could technically use them on a font size and they'll work a lot like M, but that also runs into that scaling and compounding issue. And the same reason I don't like to use M's on font sizes is the same reason I wouldn't use a percentage on a font size. The two of them work extremely similar to one another. So rem is sort of the safe bet there. Now in, we're gonna be jumping back into Flexbox and actually building out layouts and practicing and using all of these things that we have learned up until now, plus going back into Flexbox, which we haven't seen in a really long time since pretty much the crash course. And we're gonna be looking at understanding it and how it works a little bit better as we learn to start thinking responsibly.